So what is a youth-friendly community? A youth-friendly community has to be able to provide evidence that there's a minimum of 10 of 16 criteria being met. You're wondering what criteria, who's created them, where does it come from? Um, Youth-Friendly Communities is a PlayWorks partnership uh, initiative. There are 16 criteria that uh, have been developed by the um, organizations that are part of that. They are grounded in research. Um, there's a handout that has uh, 16, uh, the 16 criteria listed. If you are a platinum community, and we have two of them in the room, that means they've provided evidence that all 16 criteria are in their community. Okay? A bronze community has 10 or 11. Right? 10 or 11? Is that right? Um, silver, obviously, then, is 12 or 13. Gold is 14 or 15. And platinum is 16. It's a recognition program that is, once you've done it, you can hold that, that, that color, that recognition for five years. At any time within that five years, you can reapply if you want to up, up your uh, recognition level standard. But every five years, you have to provide that evidence. The evidence is provided not just by one organization. It has to be the community altogether. So one of the examples, if you look at the very first example, I believe it is youth have opportunities for play, right? I'm sure every one of you in the room knows of opportunities for play. You probably belong to organizations and associations who provide some of those opportunities. But then there's other groups out there as well. You know, if you're from a municipality, you want to include your not-for-profit organizations, your churches, your Girl Guides, your Boy Scouts, your uh, faith-based organizations, uh, you know, uh, social clubs and networks that happen within your own community. Everybody has to be part of this uh, process. As far as definition of what the community is, that's also something that can be defined based on uh, a higher level of decision making. So if you have a town council, then whatever their boundaries are can be considered your, um, your neighborhood or your community to become youth friendly. I know in the city of Toronto, St. Lawrence Heights is a youth friendly community. They defined their boundaries and they provided evidence that within St. Lawrence Heights, they are a youth friendly community. So it can be broken down into smaller chunks as well as, you know, if the City of Toronto uh, wanted to, to do this, it would be, you know, uh, a full-time job for somebody to, to bring all the evidence together. But they could do it as a city, or you can do it within your own little nubs of community. Okay? Are there any questions about the criteria? Is there anybody in the room who had no idea that youth-friendly communities existed? Okay? Which is good, right? Because it really is the framework for all this youth-friendly terminology. These are 16 grounded in research criteria that say very clearly, if you have evidence of these in your communities, your communities are youth-friendly. And more likely than not, the communities that you come from, if you were to go through those 16 criteria, you could probably in your head just do a real quick random checklist and say, we do this, we do this, we do this. Yeah, we should probably look at that a little bit, right? I believe every community in Ontario is youth friendly to some degree. I believe that every community can do more to be even more youth friendly. Okay? So why do we want to be youth friendly? This is always the big question. It's because play makes sense. Play makes sense. If young people are playing, and when we talk about playing, we're talking about out of school time, right? So quality use of out of school time. Less crime and more post-secondary graduates. Young people who are engaged in doing what they need to do help to bring down the, uh, the crime rate, and they also um, have more success in post-secondary school. Less people are th therefore using social services because they're engaged in their community, they're finding employment, they want to be gainful and, and productive. Youth are in danger of being canceled until further notice. That's really scary, especially for those of us who work with youth and are advocates for youth. Being active and engaged in the community is a vital part of the development of youth. Youth are being shut out of activities and places where they once thrived. I had a group of kids in the community I live in, which is rural Ontario, and uh, they were playing basketball in a schoolyard. And I came around the corner because I lived near the school and the police were there. And I knew some of the kids, so I pulled over. And the police officer was trying to shoo them out of the schoolyard because the school wasn't open and there was nobody there to supervise them. And you know, so I very politely said, my tax dollars paid for this basketball hoop. 
you know, and if these kids want to play here, they should be able to play here. Is there a bylaw that says they can't play here? Luckily for us, there are no bylaws, but there are communities that actually say children are not allowed or young people are not allowed to be in schoolyards without permits after certain hours, right? They lock their gates in the summertime and those fields get cut and no, no young people are running and playing on them, right? There's a, there's a threat of them being canceled. And obviously, a uh, youth-friendly community helps to build a healthier, stronger community. It's attractive to new businesses, new people, and new investments. And that's a big thing for decision makers. We want communities that are economically sound. And if you have a community that is friendly to youth and that parents want to live in with their youth and youth want to return back to, then you're going to be a healthier, a healthier stronger community. Okay? When we think about the uh, youth-friendly criteria that fits with today, because the question at the beginning of the day was, what, uh, what's that got to do with you being youth-friendly? One of the criteria is actually that the community supports positive youth development and providing evidence that young people um, are being led by youth-friendly champions. By coming here today, you can take your email confirmation that said you attended it and add it to your youth-friendly community application because the community is investing your time in making sure that positive youth development continues. Okay? In order to prepare youth for success, parents, communities, and decision makers should move beyond a deficit-focused model of youth development, ensuring that youth are problem-free, and toward a coordinated and asset-focused approach that seeks to prepare youth to thrive as family and community members, leaders, and contributors to the province and our future. Scales and Benson said that in 2004. In a nutshell, what it means is that everybody's involved in making sure that young people have opportunities to grow. Keywords out of that definition would be coordinated approach, right? Coordinated, so we think about it. It's not, you know, um, if you think about the history of some of our um, youth strategies and things that have gone on in the province of Ontario, um, you know, agencies at one time just did what was good for their agency. And now you can see different groups starting to work together. You know, you've got the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Children and Youth Services and the Ministry of Culture, Tourism and Sport saying, what are we doing for after school? How are we keeping youth engaged in out of school time? And they're crossing over those references to make it more of a coordinated approach. Okay? This quote actually came from the Stepping Stones resource document. The Stepping Stones resource document is a framework that the province of Ontario has created. It is available online at, uh, I think you can get through it through the youthinrecreation.org website. Okay? But if you Google Stepping Stones Youth, it'll come right up on the Ontario.ca website. Okay? Really what it does is it speaks directly to supporting youth as they develop in the four components. Socially, right? Everybody, we want youth to be social. We want them to understand who they are, the relationships with others, and how they fit into that social spectrum. Cognitively, developing their thinking skills. Emotionally, not only experiencing emotion, but regulating emotion. And physically, adjusting to a rapidly changing body uh, that brings uh, new opportunities and limitations. Because we all remember being youth, right? And all those changes. So that's what Stepping Stones does. It takes those four, and it even, you know, it even talks about the, the whole moral piece, too. It, the capacity of individual morals and, and, and how you, uh, what you value and, and how you're going to uh, bring them out as a productive adult once you're through this thing called youth. Are there any questions about positive youth development? Okay. And then, of course, the other question that is often asked is, who are youth? Because some, you know, like the Stepping Stones framework is for uh, 14 to 24, 12 to 24, 12 to 24. Edit that. Sorry. The Stepping Stones document is for 12 to 24. There you go. Okay. Youth-friendly communities, in this case, consider youth to be 13 to 19. Consideration for up to 25 for those with special needs, right? Because we do the integration piece and, and you know, allow, allow for that growth and development and any uh, differences thereof, okay? 
So that's why when we did the uh, initial uh, get to know who's in the room, and I said if you work with 13 to 19 year olds, right, and the majority of the room stood up because that really is the, the thrust of uh, the youth friendly communities research and where it's going is those ages of 13 to 19. Okay, who you are at 13 is way different than who, who you are at 19. At 19 you're a college graduate now in Ontario. In some cases, right? Because you go to college at 17. Right? For the adults in the room, some of you just got to look at panic because you're thinking, oh my goodness, I so didn't graduate college at 19. I was still in the thrust of it. Things are changing. The world is changing. Things are evolving. Okay? Who are you? 13 to 19. 